Thank you. I am the program coordinator for the Bachelor of Engineering uh, Education here in uh, DTU. It's in electronics. And uh, when we started doing this, of course, I have the, the, the benefit uh, in relation to the other speakers that I have only one program, so I will dig deep into what we actually did in, in this one program and try to uh, tell you about what happened about these things. The, the program that we have been doing is actually uh, 40 years old or so. Uh, it, uh, it started in an engineering school, uh, and uh, this engineering school was merged into DTU uh, uh, around, say, 14, 15 years ago. Uh, many programs have been uh, devised in that time, and the last revision we did was the one in uh, uh, 2006, where we knew we need to have uh, an implementation of CDIO in this program, but uh, the details were not ready at that point. But we made, we knew something. We knew we needed to have uh, design build projects. We knew that uh, we should have four mandatory semesters and so. Uh, so we made uh, uh, a new curriculum and uh, it's uh, shown in this program, which is the electronics program. And basically, uh, what we did at this point was we were focusing primarily on what we could call the progression of technical knowledge. There was no CDU, CDIO in this one, except that when we knew it was coming, we made space for the, the, the inclusion of uh, CDIO and especially these uh, interdisciplinary projects and design build projects that we needed to put. So we made the, the technical program here, uh, and uh, we're starting here with, uh, of course, it's electronics, so we have analog digital electronics, we have some programming, and we have some mathematics. Uh, next year we do exactly the same thing, but we make it progress a little bit wider. And on the third and fourth semesters, uh, actually we don't have any progression between the, three, the third and the fourth semester, uh, because if we wanted progression in four levels here, we would get a very narrow program. Instead of doing uh, it this way, uh, we um, get a, a large platform at this point with many courses, uh, that you could build upon uh, after that. Um, after this, uh, for first semester, which are the CDIO part of this education, uh, we are actually using uh, the big amount of courses that we have in the university, especially within electrical engineering, IT technology, and also from uh, the uh, Space Institute. So. Uh, Actually, a lot of institutes are actually taking part in this kind of education. So basically, uh, these are elective courses so the students can take 45 ECTS points, uh, basically uh, within a list of 50 approved courses. A course for the students that are not necessarily so good in reading in all these uh, large uh, databases with courses, we have made some proposals. Uh, some called electrical energy systems, some in electronics design, some in medical electronics and digital processing, and some in wireless system. So this is basically uh, a technical program for this education. When we stop and end the education at the sixth and seventh semester, where we have internship in a Danish industrial company, or maybe abroad, and we have a, a, a thesis, a, a final year project. This is the same written in a, a different manner because now we can see from the first, second, fourth semester which are the CDIO parts. And if you look at the color coding in this one, then uh, at the end of every semester we would have a, an interdisciplinary project. There would be a design build project here at the first, a design build at the fourth. This is actually where the, the steam engine is. If you saw that in the project demonstration yesterday, it's running down here. And we have two interdisciplinary projects uh, here. The white part is courses that are directly connected to these uh, interdisciplinary projects. Uh, and the uh, light orange, or whatever that color is, uh, are courses that are remotely connected, but still contributing in some manner. And uh, these uh, light blue ones do not connect 
into these uh, interdisciplinary projects at all. At the end, we have elective courses and industrial internship and final year projects. So basically, this is how we do it. And, and please note that on the first semester, we actually managed to utilize all the courses, even from the mathematical and programming courses, into this uh, project we are doing here. It was also presented yesterday. Now you have seen one of these before. Uh, the competence matrix. Uh, actually, we did not, and we had not seen one when we started. It was quite new for us. So we started in, uh, in uh, the program development group, actually to take them one by one. These are all the uh, syllabus, DTU syllabus competences. And we walked uh, through one of each and discussed w what was really the meaning of all these competences. What does it actually imply in our education? And what we did for each one of them, we simply just marked down here, this is all the courses uh, starting from, star from start and going down to the uh, end of the study. Uh, we started just marking which one could be candidates for doing something with this. We, needed, we marked some spots where we could actually implement uh, some part of this uh, syllabus. After that, of course, we realized that there was actually uh, many challenges in, in, in doing that, uh, especially in uh, uh, point three, uh, the interpersonal uh, competences as such, because we needed to create some kind of progression in this. And how do you measure progression um, in, for instance, report writing and so, because first semester uh, students might have one level of reporting and the fourth semester or maybe the seventh semester students might have a more experienced level of reporting. And uh, I'll come back to this a little bit later. Then we went through the courses, and then we used Bloom's taxonomy to mark which level, uh, Bloom level, was actually uh, put into these courses. Uh, if we are going to make progression in, for instance, group work, uh, project planning, report writing, uh, then we also need to test it in some way. And that was actually quite a problem for us. Uh, not only that do we need to test it, but we also need to explain to the students what is the level you are able to comply with during this uh, uh, four semesters. And um, well, actually, we, we, we discussed, well, maybe we could make some kind of report standards, a standard document. This is how a report should look. But uh, we suddenly found out that uh, a report is not ju just a report, it also depends on uh, what it's reporting. Uh, so uh, basically, that was not such a good idea. Instead, uh, we actually did something else and said, well, basically, at the first semester, why not give the students a partial field uh, report, uh, and then they put in uh, what they have done and their results, and then they can see and, and learn from how the report has been made. Afterwards, uh, second semester, we uh, do the same thing, but uh, a less partial field report. And then we start uh, using uh, reviews, not only by the teacher, but also peer reviews, the students uh, reviewing other students' reports. And then we believe when we come to the, sorry, are we here? When we come to third or fourth semester, we think they should be ready at least to provide decent reports. And of course, when you go to the seventh semester and so, they are more experienced because they have done it many times. Uh, regarding the cooperation, the planning and distribute work when working in group, when we start gradually, uh, first semester, we are uh, having a group size two to three persons. They uh, write a project plan, a small one, just to distribute the work between them. And uh, they use a Gantt plot to show the resource allocation over the time. Second, third semester, we increase this to up to four uh, students. And on the fourth semester, which is actually the steam engine project, we have up to 10 persons working. And this really puts pressure on the students because uh, 10 ECTS points and uh, 10 persons, and so that's quite a lot of time. That's actually uh, close to, I think I calculated yesterday, it's, more, it's actually more than one man year allocated in total to each of these projects. And they need 
to get uh, things working and need to start planning. And uh, they are doing that, actually. So uh, we give them, to support that, some lectures in, in project management, and we give them some reference material as such. Uh, and then we set them off on this project. Now, all these things, uh, doing this uh, uh, matrix we saw before, uh, all these uh, competences, all these discussions, they were uh, minuted. Uh, we had, of course, a lot of meetings doing that, and there was many minutes of that. And, and so at some point, we realized that we were actually doing the same process all over again for each course. And so, so uh, we saw there might be some kind of system in that. And uh, we also saw that all the discussions at the outcomes of these were actually beneficial and very valuable for the uh, uh, education as such. But we did not really have a problem to fit them in because if we look at the structure, at how we uh, document or present the engineering programs to the outside world and also to our own students, we, we have a course database, which is basically a very formal uh, database with, uh, say, one, one and a half page for e each uh, course number, stating, of course, the learning uh, objectives for all the courses, uh, a little bit about what's in the course, and all some practic uh, a lot of practical information about exam times, number of credit points, and also a little bit about, well, you need to have this course number before this, and also. Um, so this was not the place to put in all this information. The study handbook uh, described in the same matter, uh, the whole program. But still, it is also uh, in a rather short text, and uh, it's always uh, directed outwards, outwards to society, industry, and of course, to be used by the students. What we were looking for is some way to gather all this information that we have created around this study. Uh, and actually, uh, we decided to design some kind of document to hold all this information. This is for internal use, internal use for, for me as the program director and internal use for using by, by the various teachers who are actually working on this. In that way, if we wrote everything down in this, we actually freeze-dried the whole education and said, well, now we have a document that actually tells what people are going to do because in a university environment, we, we really have uh, some problems because uh, we are doing... Uh, uh, basic engineering, and there's a lot of researchers uh, uh, and lots of teachers. All the teachers are doing research in some matter. Some are, are teaching on a master level, some have PhD courses, and they might uh, at some time uh, need to go down and take uh, courses and uh, maybe supervise or even teach courses in, in this education, and they really would not know how to do it because they have a whole a different framework in how they teach. So. Uh, this master document could be used to help them. Oops. Uh, the structure of, of, of this doc uh, uh, document is actually in the paper. I will not uh, say so much about that, uh, except that, um, as you can see here, the competence profile is something that is very top level for every uh, bachelor program uh, uh, we have at DTU and all programs has such a document, it's a two-page uh, flyer that tells exactly what uh, the industry and the, um, uh, what the industry uh, would expect or could expect from this uh, for students. It's like a, a label. Uh, there would be a graphical overview of the courses, which is the one you have seen already. There would be some figure describing progression on each syllabus point in order to visualize that these courses have this special uh, connection that it needs to take this uh, CDIO bullet uh, through the... Um, uh, they have responsibilities to cooperate about that. And um, then, of course, the competence matrix should be there, and we should put in all course descriptions if needed. As such. For every course, we do the same, same thing, but it's uh, a little bit deeper because in the progression within the field of technical knowledge and reasoning and collaboration. These are all the stuff that people are dealing. There's two courses talking together and 
creating a lot of interface specification information which are not in all these documents, but it could be put into master document, and that's where we really get the value out of this. Uh, there would also be something about... Um, sorry. Uh, there would be something about the contributions to design build across this project, which means that this, uh, this uh, particular course has obligations and in, 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 in roles in these projects. And of course, uh, there could be a list of which learning objectives we are addressing in this course. And actually, if you are wondering why there is uh, two of these, uh, well, basically, what we get out of this is uh, an exact copy of the learning objectives that is taken out of this document and put into the course database. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you can have a, a look at all the benefits out of this. Um, I'll go to the end. Uh, if we look at what challenges we have now, is actually that we have completed the document and more or less, but uh, we have still uh, work to be done on the third and fourth semester courses. Uh, some of these are in the process. Uh, some of these courses has been running, of course, but uh, they are still in the development. Uh, we need to evaluate the teacher responses. And actually, we take need to take all the course evaluations that we do on a regular basis on the courses and look at them and see what is actually the benefit of all that. There would also be a, a some kind of auditing of this education. It's five years uh, since it has been done last time. And now we'll have a new one and see what happens. That is from a governmental board that come and uh, accredit the, this education. Uh, this is the next to last. Uh, we have... One of these courses uh, where we have a lot of tests, you can see in the paper as well. But uh, what is interesting is that these curves seem to be increasing after the implementation of CDO, CIO, which means that the activation, the feeling of learning a lot, um, the workload, all of these has gone up. So it seems that actually we are increasing. Uh, I think the five is a good number here. And uh, it has been uh, tested over uh, um, five semesters and uh, they are uh, very much increasing. The workload has also gone up, so actually we have good results in the students learning a lot and learning more. They are more active, and even the workload is higher, and they are not complaining of that. So that I think that's a, a good example of what can you can see. Hopefully it's the CDIO that it causes this, but you never know uh, unless you have done some statistics. Basically, uh, talking about this master document, um, it keeps records uh, of exactly why a particular learning out outcome has been put into this course plan. Because two or three years uh, along in the process, teachers might have changed and all these agreements that had been made has been lost. So basically, what the master document is, that it keeps a picture on what it is that we really want. And uh, by actually keeping these detailed records of, of the whole program, it assures that the culture uh, of this education can be maintained as long as we need. Yes? Thank you very much.